ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمٍ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ and everything we newly invented to this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةً ضَلَالَةً And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةً فِي النَّارِ Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدْ My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, common times we get into states of hopelessness, sadness, depression, anxiety, heartache and loneliness. And for us to pick ourselves up from that, typically we need to remind ourselves about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many beautiful reminders that we have that we should never forget, that will cause us to never despair. And it will remind you what an amazing Lord we have. From these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, that Allah will forgive us because His mercy is greater than His anger and His wrath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَاكْتُبْ لَنَا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ إِنَّا خُدْنَا إِلَيْكِ قَالَ عَذَابِي أُصِيبُ بِهِ أَشَاءُ مَنْ أَشَاءُ وَرَحْمَتِي وَسَعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِنَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, what means an ordain for us good in the world and in the hereafter. Certainly we have turned unto you. This will be those who, who make that statement to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, as to my punishment, I afflict there with whom I will. And my, worst, my mercy, my rahmah embraces all things. That mercy I shall ordain for those who are the muttaqoon, those who have taqwa, those who act in a way of obedience to put a barrier, a shield, a distance between themselves and the punishment of Allah because of their obedience to Allah and to His Messenger wasallam. Those who are the muttaqoon and they give the zakat and they believe in our ayat, our signs and evidences and lessons, these people... Allah has ordained mercy for them. An Abi Hurayrat radiallahu anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna Allah hina khalaq al-khalq kataba biyadihi ala nafsihi inna rahmati taghlibu ghadabi Ruwahu al-Tirnabi wa hadha hadithun sahih Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said verily when Allah he created the creation he wrote with his hand and this is a hand that is not like his creation. So don't go and think this is likening Allah to his creation. There is nothing and no one 
comparable to Allah, and He's the all-hearing, the all-seeing. But this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ states that verily Allah, when He created the creation, He wrote with His hand in His book concerning Himself, My Rahman, My Mercy prevails over My anger and My wrath. And this hadith is Sahih in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi. Allah's mercy, Ar Rahman, is merciful to everything entirely, the entirely merciful. To the believer and the disbeliever. To the obedient one and to the sinner. Giving them food and drink and clothing and health and life. Rahim, the especially merciful. This is specifically for the believers, may Allah make us from them. So that His mercy will go upon them. Giving us things we do not deserve. Giving us things we have not earned. Willing to forgive us even though we sin and we sin and we sin. His mercy prevails over his anger. An Abi Umama radiallahu anhu, an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqal inna sahib al-shimal liyarfa' al-qalam sitta sa'atin an al-abd al-muslim al-mukhti' aw al-musih. فَإِنْ نَدِمَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ اللَّهَ مِنْهَا أَلْقَاهَا وَإِلَّا كُتِبَتْ وَاحِدَةً Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, Verily the angel on the left side, the angel over your left shoulder that records your evil deeds and your sins, he will raise his pen over the error or sin of a Muslim servant for six hours. If he sincerely regrets it, لِأَنَّ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَنَّدْمُ تَوْبَةً Because nadam regret is tawbah, it is repentance. If he regrets his sin and he asks Allah for forgiveness and seeks his forgiveness, the angel will throw that sin to the side. But if that time period passes, he will write it down as one sin. وَهَذَا الْحَبِيدِ حَسَنْ فِي الْمُعْجَمِ الْكَبِيرِ لِلْتَبْرَانِ And Shaykh Al-Bani, he greeted it as Hassan. He'll throw that sin to the side. If you make tawbah, you run back to Allah. Tawbah and Nasuh have a sincere repentance. Allah says, قُلْ لِمَنْ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ قُلْ لِلَّهِ كَتَبَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ لِيَجْمَعَنَّكُمْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ أَلَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says, what means say, O Muhammad Wasallam? To whom belongs all that is in the heavens and the earth. Say to Allah, He has prescribed rahmah, katab ala nafsihi rahmah, He has prescribed mercy for Himself. Indeed, we will gather you together on the day of resurrection, a day in which there is no doubt it will come. Those who destroy themselves will not believe in Allah as the only ilah, or as Muhammad in Muhammad وسلم, as the final. A messenger and servant, uh, the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will not believe in the resurrection. But Allah katab ala nafsihi rahmah. He wrote for himself. He prescribed mercy for himself. You have a Lord, a Lord who's merciful. And his mercy prevails over his anger and his wrath. We have a Lord who is capable of all things. Nothing for him is impossible or too hard. He only needs to say, Kun fayakun bi, and it will be. Whether it's regarding anything, the creation of the heavens and the earth, or the people, mankind, or whatever it may be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تَخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبُكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is on the earth. And whether you disclose what's in yourselves, or you conceal it and you hide it, Allah will call you to account for it. Ain't nobody from the creation has to know what you did it, Allah knows it all. Then He forgives whom He wills and He punishes whom He wills and Allah is able to do all things. Allah is capable of everything. There's nothing He can't do. الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ الرَّحْمَانُ فَاسْأَلْ بِهِ خَبِيرًا Allah SWT says what means regarding Himself that He is the who created the heavens and the earth. 
He is the one who created the heavens and the earth. And all that is between them in six days, even though we could have done it in the blink of an eye. It takes us years to put a building together. Many years to put a taller one. Many years to just drill through a mountain to make a freeway go through it. But Allah, who could have created all that's in the heavens and earth in the blink of an eye, He chose to do it in six days because that's what He wanted. He created it in six days, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ And He ascended above His arch, above His throne, separate from His creation in a manner which suits His majesty. You're not to ask how. You will never comprehend how. Asking how Allah is stawa, how He rose above His throne, is an innovation. And you shouldn't even try to think about it. This istawa clarifies that Allah, He is above the heavens and the earth, and there should be no doubt in this. We got to get knowledgeable, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Stop saying Allah is everywhere and this and that. He said it many times in the Quran that He created all this and then ascended above His arsh, which is above His kursi, which is above the seven heavens and the earth. And he's separate from his creation. Even a slave girl, she came when she was hit by her master. And he came and he told the Prophet ﷺ what he had done. He said, bring this young girl to me. He asked her, man rabbik. Who is it? Man rabbik, who is your... Afwan. He asked her, ayn Allah. He asked this slave girl at her age, where is Allah? She pointed up to him, to sama, folk of sama. She pointed up the indication that he is above the heavens and the earth, not everywhere, or she would have done this. Then he asked her, وَمَنْ أَنَا Who am I? She said, أَنْتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ You are the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. So he told her owner, أَعْتِقَهَا فَإِنَّهَا مُؤْمِنَا Free her because she is a believer. This indicates to you that if she does not understand that Allah is above the heavens and the earth, and you do not believe in Muhammad as your messenger and servant, uh, messenger of Allah, as the messenger of Allah, then you're not a believer. So this aspect of Aqidah has to be solid and said that Allah, He is above the heavens and the earth. Above His throne, separate from His creation. In this ayah, Allah said, who, this Allah is the one who created the seven heavens and the earth. And what is between them in six days, then he is stawa, he rose above the throne in a manner, his throne in a manner which suits his majesty, the most beneficent Allah. Ask him, O Muhammad concerning his qualities, his creations, etc. He is Al Khabir, the all knower of everything. Allah la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la noom. Sleep, slumber, tired, fatigue does not overtake him. He is capable of everything. Never doubt this, ya akhwani wa khati fillah. Nothing is too big for him. If you've got to ask for it, ask Allah for it. If you need help with it, seek Allah's help with it. Because there's nothing he can't do. Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has called you to meet him five times a day at the least. So how can you feel lonely when Allah has given you this gift? Allah wa ni'mal wakil that Allah should be sufficient for us. And He is the best disposer of affairs, the best protector. And Anasim radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha kana ahadakum fi salati, fa innahu yunaji rabbah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, when any one of you is engaged in salah, in prayer, he is holding an intimate conversation with his Lord. Muttafiqun alayhi, this hadith is agreed upon by Bukhari and Muslim and it is an authentic hadith. When you're in salah, you're in an intimate conversation with your Lord. <coughs> one on one. Yet, how can we then choose to not milk that time and take our time and give that time to us and our Creator for that relationship to grow stronger, to grow closer to Him? Instead, we just rush through it like it's not any important thing. This prayer, this is the sila, the connection between you and your Lord. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, 
قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أقرب ما يقول العبد من ربه وهو ساجد فأكثر الدعاء We said this hadith over and over and over again and we're going to continue to say it until we make sajda the way we were commanded to make it. And this hadith is in the Sahih al nisai that the closest a person is to their Lord, to his knowledge, to his pleasure, to his aid, to his help, to his assistance, is when he's making sajda. So take your time in that. Let the bones settle. Beg of your Lord. Praise Him and glorify Him and ask of Him. Make dua. Anyone who tells you not to make dua and says that, don't take a lick of information from them. Make dua in your sajda. Allah can hear you. Even though He's above His throne, above the seven heavens and the earth, and you're at the lowest point of the ground you're standing on. You don't have to look for further. You don't got to ask nobody else. You don't got to worry about where to go. You don't got to search no more. Allah's help and guidance, He has gifted to you when He gifted us with the Salah. The Salah is not a burden. The Salah is not something that's taking up your time or wasting your time. It is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For you to praise Him and glorify Him, thank Him and ask Him, seek His help and seek His guidance. As a side note, my brothers and sisters in Islam, Reflect upon if you had a meeting for a job, or a meeting with your boss, or a meeting uh, to, uh, you know, you had to catch a flight at the airport, or you had an appointment with your doctor. You would set an alarm clock. You would set a reminder for that, that appointment. You would tell someone you love or close to you, hey, make sure I get up so I'm there on time. Yet when it comes to the salah, some of us don't even set our clocks. Shaykh ibn Baz, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him, when he was asked about the one who disregards Fajr to the point that they won't set their alarm for this was an aspect that you could consider this person a disbeliever, a kafir from. If we had to be somewhere to catch a flight, to be at an appointment, to get a job, to make some money, we all know well and sure that we would be setting that clock. Not just one alarm, two or three of them to make sure we're up. So mind your, remind yourselves of this. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said, and verily, for everything that a slave loses, there's a substitute. Whether we want to think it or not. For everything a slave loses, there's a substitute. But the one who loses Allah will never find anything or anyone to replace him. If you do not understand this, you do not understand the importance of Allah or this being in your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how great He is, He said, walk to me, I'll run to you. Come to me this much, I'll come to you that much. Not even halfway, He'll come further. He said, even if your sins reach the skies, I'll forgive you. And Abi Dhar radiallahu anhu, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqul Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, man jaa bin hasana, falahu ashru amthaliha. وأزيد ومن جاء بالسيئة فجزاء سيئة مثلها أو أغثر ومن تقرب مني شبرا تقربت منه ذراعا ومن تقرب مني ذراعا تقربت منه باعا ومن آتاني يمشي آتيتها آتيته هرولا ومن لقيني بقر ومن لقيني بقراب الأرض خطيئة ثم لا يشرك به شيئا this hadith which is sahih. Listen, listen to how your Lord is. So you can realize how much we are deficient. I advise myself first. Abu Dhar, he narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah glorified and exalted as he said, whosoever does a one good deed, he will get the reward of ten like it or more. Allah multiplies all the good you do. And whoever does a bad deed or a sin, they will just get one written against him or I'll forgive him. He said, whoever draws near to me a handstand, I'll come near to him a forearm's length. Whoever comes near to me a forearm's length, I'll come near to him an arm's length. Who comes to me walking, I'm going to come to him running. And if my servant was to come to me and meet me with an earth full of sins, but does not associate anything in worship with me, I will meet him, meet his sins with forgiveness equal to that. This is the Lord we have. Instead of us going 99% and Allah just coming 1%, 
or us going 100%, Allah not needing to come to us because we need Him, He don't need us. This is the mercy, this is the rahmah of our Lord. Trying to save us so He can admit us into Jannah by His rahmah, by His mercy. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَخْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ أَثْفَرَوْا عَيْثْمًا عَظِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means verily Allah forgives not that partner should be set up with him in worship, but he forgives except that anything else to whom he pleases and whoever sets up partners with Allah in worship has indeed invented a tremendous sin. That's all that's asked of us. Don't commit shirk and Allah will meet us with forgiveness and mercy. Knowing this, who can mock tawheed? Who can downplay this topic of tawheed? about making sure we only single out Allah and worship alone without partners in truth. Who can, mark, who can mock aqidah and learning about aqidah? This is what gets you in the door for your salah and your zakah and your siyam and your hajj and your, uh, your, your, your amanat al-salihah to be accepted. None of that matters if your tawheed ain't right. An Anis ibn Malik radiallahu anhu qal, Sami'ata Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a yaqul, qal Allah ya ibn Adam, إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني غفرت لك على ما كان فيك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم لو بلغت ذنوبك أمام السماء ثم استغفرتني غفرت لك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم إنك لو آتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها مغفرة this hadith which is Hassan, Allah's, the, Allah, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said that Allah blessed and most high is He. He said, O son of Adam, verily as long as you called upon me and you hoped in me, I forgave you despite whatever may have occurred from you. And I don't mind to forgive you and forgive you and forgive you. O son of Adam, were your sins to reach the clouds of the sky and you sought forgiveness for me, I would forgive you and I would not mind even though I gave you so much and didn't want you to sin but you still chose to, I will forgive you and I do not mind. O son of Adam, so if you came to me with sins nearly as great as the earth and you met me not associating partners with me, I would come to you with forgiveness nearly as great as it. This is the Lord we have. This is what he meets us with. But what are we going to take to the table when we meet him? Allah loves those who repent. And Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu mutatahirin. Indeed, Allah loves those who repent to him and he loves those who purify themselves. And Anas radiallahu anhu qal, anna qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kulla bani adam khatta' wa khayru khatta'in al-tawabun. The Prophet he said in this authentic hadith, Hassan in Sunnah of Ibn Majah, he said, every son of Adam commits a sin, but the best of those who commit sins are those who repent. The best of those who commit sins are those who repent. We have a Lord who forgives as long as you come to Him with seeking sincere repentance. Abu Sirma, he narrated from Abu Ayyub that when death reached him, he said, قَدْ قَدْ كَتَمْتُ عَنْكُمْ شَيْئًا سُمِعْتُهُ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لو لا أنكم تذنبون لخلق الله خلقا يذنبون ويغفر لهم رواه الترمبي وهذا حديث صحيح Abu Ayyub, he said that when death reached him, he said, I've concealed something I heard from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi say, if you do not sin, Allah would have replaced you with a creation that would sin just so He could forgive them. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we're blessed to be upon this deen, to know our Lord is one, to worship Him as one in truth, alone without any partners. And yet, despite that, we sin and we sin and we sin, but we still have a Lord whose mercy prevails over His wrath. أَقُولُ قَلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَقْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ وَاللَّهِ يَقْفِرُ لَكُمْ بِنُوبُ
ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد ما دي برادرز اند سيسترز ان الاسلام ميك يور داون ذا بريست ساد ستراجلينج لونلي الله has called us to converse with him at least five times a day. His mercy prevails over his wrath. He's willing to forgive sins even if they're the, up to the levels of the whole earth and like the foam of the ocean. He's willing to come to us running even if we just come to him walking. This is the Lord we have. This dunya is nothing but a beautiful lie. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة فمن زحزح عن النار وأدخل الجنة فقد فاز وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور Allah says what means every soul will taste death only on the day of resurrection shall you be paid your wages in full whoever is removed from the fire and admitted into paradise into Jannah he is indeed successful the life of this world is only an enjoyment of deception it's a deceiving thing it's a beautiful lie What Allah has in store for us, khayr mu'abaka, it is better than this, and it's eternal and everlasting, not like this piece of life we're in. Not like this earth that we're upon right now. Allah has prepared, as He said, in the hadith Qudsi, a'adadtu li'abadi s-salihin, ma la'ayn, ma la'ayn al-ra'at, wa la'udhim al-sami'at, wa la'khatara ala qadbi bashar. Allah has prepared for His servants what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what can't even occur to the human heart. Being able to see the face of Allah as a reward for the inhabitants of Jannah. May Allah make us from them. Allah, our Lord, He is shy that you ask of Him and He returns your hands empty after you raise them up to Him in dua. In dua. And a brief mention here. We got to stick to what? To the Quran and the Sunnah. Making dua after every fard prayer is a bid'ah. It is an innovation. It was not done by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was not done by his companions. Your better places for du'a between the Adhan and the Aqama, when it's raining, in Sajda, before Taslim. These are your times for making du'a that are better. If you do them after the Salah, you really need something. You don't always have to raise your hands for du'a. This is another misconception. Actually, you should do it when you're really begging for something. So leave off doing it after every part of Salah. It is not legislated in our deen. Yet we have this hadith that shows that you can raise your hand when you're pleading from something from Allah to ask of Allah. عن سلمان الفارسي رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله حيي كريم يستحي إذا رفع الرجل إليه يديه أن يردوهما 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 صفرا خائبتين. This hadith which is sahih according to Sheikh Al-Albani, Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said verily Allah is shy and generous. He would be shy when a man raises his hands to him begging of him and he returns him empty-handed and disappointed. We have a Lord shy that when we ask us sinners who do not thank Allah for all the blessings He's given us and sin so much that it trumps all of those good deeds we do, that He's still shy to return our empty hands, our hands that are begging of Him empty-handed and with disappointment. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ جِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّائِي إِذَا دَعَانِ فَبْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَالْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Allah sends what means, and when my slaves ask you, O Muhammad وسلم, concerning me, then answer them, I'm indeed near. I'm near to them by my knowledge. I respond to the dua, to the invocations of the supplicant when he calls upon me, without any mediator or intercessor, so let them obey me and believe in me so that they may be led aright. You have a Lord that's shy to not answer your dua, make dua to him. It is a weapon for a believer. Call upon your Lord. And the last thing I just want to mention is that we have a Lord who loves us and He may show that love through tests. 
عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عظم عظم الجزاء مع عظم البلاء وإن الله إذا حب قوما ابتلاهم فمن رضي فله الرضا ومن سقط فله السقط رواه ابن ماجه وهذا حديث حسن Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said the greatest reward comes with the greatest trial the more you're tried the more reward you'll get when Allah loves the people he tests him he tests them so he tests trial difficulty hardship calamity no matter what it is it's all a test from Allah whoever accepts what Allah decreed wins his pleasure whoever is discontent not happy thinks he was wrong then he just earns Allah's wrath and Mus'ab ibn Sa'ad he said that his father Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu he said I heard I said O Messenger of Allah which people are the most severely tested he said the prophets then the next best then the next best a person is tested according to his religious commitment if he is steadfast in his deen he will be tested more severely if he is frail in his religious commitment he will be tested according to that commitment فَمَا يَبْرَحُ الْبَلَاءِ بِالْعَبْدِ حَتَّى يَتْرُكُهُ يَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ وَمَا عَلَيْهِ مِنْ خَطِيئَةِ And then the Prophet ﷺ concluded the hadith, trials will continue to afflict the person until they leave him walking on the earth with no sin on him. This is the mercy of your Lord. We sin and sin and sin, but these little trials, even the prick of a thorn when you're picking a fruit off the tree or cutting a rose, Allah will take away sins from you. All these trials, they may bring us sadness, hardship, calamity. Allah takes away sins. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لَمْ يَبْتَلِيهِ لِيُهْلِكَهُ وَإِنَّمَ اَبْتِلَاهُ لِيُمْتَحِنَا صَبْرُهُ وَعُبُودِيَّتَهُ Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he wrote, Allah does not test you to destroy you. You're a believer in Him. He's not testing you to destroy you. He's testing you to test your patience and your subservience. So when you're tested by Allah, turn to Him. Be patient. Know He's a better planner and decision maker than we will ever be. And just increase in your worship of Him and praising of Him and glorifying of Him. May Allah make us from those who earn His mercy. Allah makhil the Muslimin and Muslimat, the Mu'minin and Mu'minat, the Hiyat and the Amwat, in the name of the Sami'ah and the Mu'min and the Mujib and the Da'wat, the Ya Makhil the Qulub, the Thabit Qulub and the Adhim. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Azzati, Amma Yasifun, As-Salamu Ala Al-Masarim, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi.